understand how an EQ is affecting the time and phase characteristics of an audio signal while boosting and cutting frequencies. The isotope ozone EQ has a great visual representation of phase response, phase delay and group delay. We just open the settings and then we activate the extra curves. And when I cut frequencies, for example, with a low cut filter, you can see how the phase response, phase delay and group delay curves are changing. Also, when I work on different frequencies and when I change the slope of the filter, the same when I boost or attenuate frequencies with a bell filter, you can see how the curves are changing when I attenuate or boost the frequencies. But what does this actually mean? So the phase in general is the temporal position of a sound wave in a 360 degree circle. And when I, when I, for example, cut or boost the frequency, the position of the sound wave can change. So the phase response tells us how much phase shift a system, in this case an EQ, applies at each frequency. And the phase delay converts the phase shift into a time delay for one specific frequency and then shows us how long this single frequency is delayed. The group delay measures the time delay of a group of frequencies. Frequencies. This is more important for us because in music we normally work on multiple frequencies at the same time. At what, what can we do against it? We have an analog mode and a digital mode. The digital mode is also called linear phase mode and the linear phase algorithm corrects the phase shift and the phase delay that happens when we boost or cut frequencies. So when you hear like artifacts or distortion while you boost or cut frequencies, then you probably should work in linear phase mode or digital mode. Nearly every modern digital EQ has a linear phase or natural phase mode, so make sure that you use your ears and use it when it is necessary. I also write down all definitions in the description and if you have any questions left, feel free to ask.